We have Star Wars dates. Yay. So as you can tell, I'm as excited as everybody else that they've announced Star Wars movies through 2026. So, uh, I would yawn, but you know, that's, but that'd be, that'd be reductive, right? I mean, so I was watching, checking around my channels on YouTube that I follow and Geeks and Gamers did a, Jeremy over there did a uh, video on this article on Collider. So, and he didn't read one of the key paragraphs and I just kind of wanted to go over, you know, kind of the whole thing again, just, just, just to understand kind of what, what this really means and, and maybe even contrast that. I mean, we also got, since Disney released a lot of what their upcoming catalog of movies, movies is for the next several years and uh, Marvel is still on a pace of three movies a year and Marvel is currently doing fine there are cracks in Marvel um, the uh, the you know Captain Marvel character the Brie Larson whole situation you know whether that continues or not and whether they move more towards that way of identity politics and crap um, will We'll have to see how that goes. I know they're talking about introducing, you know, the, the fully on gay character. You know, we'll see how that goes. Um, uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't really care too much. I mean, they don't really have, like, relationship-wise in the MCU and and that. I mean, who who do we really have? I mean, I mean Barton has his wife, right, and his family. So we know they have a, a relationship. They've teased with you know a couple different you know black widow relationships and stuff over time and then um we had the uh vision uh, scarlet witch relationship definitely that was going on so nothing that like overtook the whole film i mean if they made the whole film about their you know this gay relationship that was going on and the action parts were just in the background well that's you know that's stupid i don't want to go see that you know i want to go see interesting story with interesting villains and, and, and you know interesting and you know new and exciting you know action scenes you know that's you know really what what i want to see and what i want to be you know you know and understand right you know that's what i want right i don't i don't want i don't want identity politics and the further they move that way after this maybe close to three billion dollar movie that they come out they're going to chink that armor and they're going to um, eventually you know make it you know so that it's going to go the way of star wars and they're not going to be released as many movies but but you know that's that's marvel and that's kind of okay at the minute at the moment we're watching tentatively to see what comes out next Right, the next few movies are, are seem to be pretty good there. But now here, let's go over this arc. Let's get back to what I was talking about. I get so distracted. I have no, I have no script. I have no timeline. You understand? My brain just goes and starts meandering. Imagine being in my head and seeing these thoughts that are going on, with me wandering around and trying to talk about things. It's crazy. You can't follow my conversation. Okay. So you thought Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker concluded the whole story? Thought Star Wars: The Dumbest Title on Earth was the conclusion of us completely uh, disrespecting and destroying and maligning your favorite characters. He thought that was the end of it. He thought we were just done ruining all these characters that you loved so much. But no, Disney has announced that they're going to release movies December, 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 22, 24, and 26. Six straight years, alternating between Star Wars movies and Avatar movies, which, other than the ride at Animal Kingdom, I don't know of any real Avatar anything. I don't know of any Avatar, like, I'm sure there's some Avatar fan groups out there or something somewhere. I don't know. 
there's never been a culture. There's never been a community built around Avatar. I mean, I've never seen Avatar. Um, the whole premise of Avatar is um, the United States is a horrible country and we go in and make war in other countries just to steal their resources. There you go. You've seen Avatar. Because um, that's what it's a commentary directly upon. So I never wanted to see, And that's what they're going to... And, and that at the time, in 2009 or whatever, when it came out, I mean, if that's the... What they're going to continue to do is take, you know, actions that they don't agree with that the United States takes and continue to malign them and say how stupid they are now that with, you know, with President Trump, I mean, I'm sure they're going to, you know, try and make everything something about, you know, the whatever the avatar, you know, aliens, whatever people trying to migrate to Earth or something and we're keeping them out and we're locking them in cages and stuff. And all that, even though that was started under like Clinton, and even expanded over under Obama, but then you know Trump gets blamed for it. Of course, you know stupidity, right? I mean, if that's what those are going to be, well, that's going to die off real quick, right? So, but anyway, so they go on and talk here in this thing about you know the box office woes of Solo. Well, you know, you keep doing the stupidity that you're doing. Eventually, people are going to ignore you. But so right now, it says Disney reportedly has two separate trilogies in the works. So they keep mentioning these, and you know, I, I don't see, you know, nobody sees anything coming out of them. Well, if they're not until, if the first movie isn't until 2022. So this, okay, so the 2022, 2024, and 2026, which two of the trilogies are you, is this going to be their own flavored trilogy? Are they going to do what has been highly rumored that they're going to do, which is to reboot Star Wars and go back and try and make episodes four, five, and six over again and probably throw in all their identity politics and social justice crap? Well, I hate to tell them if they do that, then first of all, no one in Star Wars that who is truly a Star Wars fan wants you to redo those movies. We want to keep them and honor them and hold them dear. We we want them, we hold them so dear to our hearts for what they did and the story that they created and the adventure that they, you know, put us on. I mean, this whole huge adventure that we went on, just, you know, we want to keep those. Don't redo those and try and destroy that. You've destroyed the rest of Star Wars, so... Don't destroy that, right? Stay away from that. So the only other thing that they may do is the Ryan Johnson trilogy. Well, like I said, stop destroying Star Wars, right? This is not <laughs> this is not what we want. You're not going in the right direction. So so they're go they're continuing on. But so I was watching you know Jeremy over Geeks and Gamers, and he. Stop, he said, he didn't even want to read this statement. And I go, and I was just thinking to myself, um, this is a huge statement right here. So what it says is here, we're looking to whether we can move massively in one direction or another. That should scare every Star Wars fan today. That should make you fully understand that where Star Wars is going has only touched the iceberg of what they're going to do. They're going to move so far past and beyond what the crap they have been doing that we're not even going to believe it, right? It's going to be, you know, so far gone. Um, then they say, it's still Star Wars. We're holding to the DNA of George Lucas. It's still very important to it. That is a blatant, complete, and total lie. Right out of her mouth. Completely, 100% lie. They have done nothing to hold to the DNA and the storytelling that George Lucas had started with. They nothing. I mean, other than, oh yeah, it's in the Star Wars universe, but you cannot destroy a character like Luke. You cannot do things like, in the very first movie that you do throw away the opportunity of bringing all of the original 
characters back together and have a scene with them, even for like 10 or 15 seconds. You can't do that. You, you know, I mean, if you really wanted to hold true and honor what George Lucas has created, you wouldn't have done what you did. You wouldn't have made a stupid Force Awakens movie that just became stupider after The Last Jedi that just remade, you know, a new episode four, the first movie. Why would you do that? Do you have no imagination? Can't you think of something yourself? I mean, supposedly George Lucas had put out all these movies... All these timelines and all this storytelling already he had all three of these movies already outlined for you and you threw that in the trash. Well, if you were holding to his DNA, you would have read that and you would have taken it to heart and you would have done something about it. So and then she goes on to say, I think it's a huge opportunity to step into the galaxy in a little bit different part of the timeline. Well, you're already doing that. You went back and made... Rogue One, and then you went back and you made Solo. Rogue One actually was probably, I would say it was probably the best one of the Disney Star Wars films, but only because there's five minutes of Darth Vader being a kick-ass Darth Vader, right? I mean, throwing people up to the ceiling, dropping him, slashing him in half with his lightsaber. I mean, that's... You know, I mean, the only thing it really missed was a really good lightsaber battle. I mean, that would have been, that would have topped that off, right? I mean, that would have been, that would have been amazing, right? But no, they didn't do that. So this right here, this huge, this whole statement that they have highlighted, they just need to highlight it and say, this is a lie. We are lying to you. We don't care about George Lucas. We don't care about the fans. We don't care about what you think. So the next, I mean, the next 10 years, So and the problem, and the whole problem is that they have to release this next film, which so far from the trailer, I, 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 you're not making me want to go see it, so far from the first trailer. Um, you have to dump every bit of identity politics, you have to somehow restore dignity to Luke Skywalker, which I don't really see them doing because the only way they can bring him back is if Force Ghost. So, and then you're supposedly bringing back, you know, Darth Vader somehow, maybe as another Force Ghost, you're bringing back uh, Yoda, you're bringing back Han, you know, uh, you can't bring back Han Solo yet. Uh, you're bringing back all these other characters. You're trying to throw everything you can into this movie, every character you can even think of that's ever had 10 seconds on screen that one person somewhere might like to desperately get them to go see the film. Well, that right there means you've lost the ability to tell a story and generate interesting characters. Right? No one cares about your new threesome. No one cares about Ray Finner Poe. I mean, nobody. There's nothing interesting about them. I mean, I mean, at least they're putting uh, you know, the helmet back on, you know, for that, but I I I think it's too late. I mean, you can put Kylo Ren's helmet back on, but you still haven't made him He's not menacing enough. There's no, you know, I mean, when you see Darth Vader in, you know, in the first movie, from way back, you know, in 76, 77, when you see him in A New Hope and he's, you're just seeing glimpses, right? You're just slowly seeing glimpses of, okay, this is a big ominous guy. And one of the first things he does is picks somebody up and breaks his, you know, snaps his neck. Okay, you know this guy has no heart. Okay, you know this guy has, you know, something that's, you know. And then he starts using the force in ways, small ways, like when they're, you know, I find your lack of faith disturbing, you know. You know, when you see these little things, you know, Vader release him, you know, all this stuff when he's got his, you know, grip on the guy's neck, you know, just all these little things slowly revealing things, not just, oh, let's just jump out on the screen and do 100% of everything. You know, 
well, I have not discovered anything with you, so I have no connection with you. This is basic, 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 basic score storytelling. I mean, just, uh, and they can't do it. I just, they just, uh. <sighs> anyway, so the problem is they're going to continue on the path that they're on. Episode nine is going to be for most deep fans is going to be horrible. We're going to not like it. Then in 2022, they're going to reboot something else and completely go off in a completely different direction. We already know that most of the three, I think two of the three uh, have said, you know, Ray, you know, what's her name? And, you know, another one of the main three have said already, they're not doing any more of these films. They're out, right? They're done. So what are you gonna what are you gonna do? You're gonna go off and you know move off and do the Rose Tico trilogy? You know, that'll go over well, Disney, yeah. No, it won't. So the problem really is that the the diehard, you know, uh, us longtime all in Star Wars fans are basically we've left. Like we're out of the building already. We're gone. So all you have left are the casual moviegoers and the people who think, oh, well, I, I need to go see a movie this weekend and this is supposed to be pretty good people, right? That everybody else is talking about this because it's in the news and we think it's going to be good, so we have to go see it. So those people are going to be going. So to And they're going to continue to go until the movies get to be so horrible that those people stop going. Because that's the problem. This is the problem. The Star Wars deep fan have left. They're out, right? Maybe they'll go see it once and done. But you have the rest of the people who are casual moviegoers who don't have any deep-seated connection to the films and to what they mean. They're still going to go. So until you can convince them to stop going by making completely horrible identity politics garbage movies and they finally re realize, you know, so December 12th, 2022, they go see it and, wow, that really wasn't that good, right? And then they're hoping that by December 2024, those casual moviegoers have forgotten how bad the movie from 2022 was and they'll go see the movie in 2024 and they'll walk out of the theater going well that was all right you know i don't i don't know so then by 2026 they're going to finally have it in their mind that oh these movies aren't very good so we probably shouldn't so i'm not going to go i'm going to go see something else you know i'm going to go see john wick number six which john wick three looks awesome i think we all should be there I already have tickets for that. John Wick, John Wick, John Wick. Interesting stories, interesting action, amazing characters, amazing everything. No identity politics. There you go. A movie I'm hyper excited about. Star Wars, no. So, so now in 2026, you're finally possibly going to get the casual moviegoer to stop seeing these films. So what does that mean? So that means... After that, it won't be until 2026 before Disney will get the hint and stop making these kinds of movies because the box office will be so low. Not to use solo as a word. Box office will be minimal. So because no one is going. Right? So we're got we're it's we're then they gotta rethink it and reboot it and do whatever they're going to do. So 2028, 2020, so we're almost a decade away from Star Wars being able to understand what it needs to do to be good. Because they're not, you know, the secretary's not going to be, you know, hopefully at some point the secretary will leave, you know, Kathleen Kennedy, the glorified secretary in charge of destroying Star Wars. Because running a movie film franchise 
is a little bit more uh, complicated than getting a file out of a cabinet. I'm sorry, it is. I don't think I could do it, but I would find people around me who were able to maintain, you know, the message and the theme and everything of Star Wars, unlike what's been done. So we're, we're still a decade away. And, and I hate to bring that as bad news to people, but this statement right here, looking to massively move in a direction, and you know, you full on know that that direction is not going to be back to classic Star Wars, back to the way Star Wars should be from episode four, five, six. That is not the direction they're going. They're not going, so this is the middle. This is the right. They've moved here. They're not going to massively move to the right. They're going to massively move off screen, so far to the left that they're going to alienate pretty much everyone. But the problem is that's going to take a decade to do. All right. Well, uh, I, I, I don't mean to be a downer about Star Wars. I, I have loved, I mean, we were, here's the other thing. We were at the park. This is my Disneyland shirt. My wife, Mrs. Tech Show right now, is currently at the park. Okay. Currently probably somewhere near Star Wars, looking at Star Wars items, looking at different Star Wars things. So the problem is we were there for uh, May 4th, Star Wars Day. And I did the count of t-shirts. I would go around counting, you know, okay, that's a Darth Vader. That's a, you know, that's a 3PO. That's an R2. That's a this. That's a, you know. That's a Chewbacca. There we go. A lot of Chewbaccas because of me, Peter May, who I wore a Chewbacca shirt that day, too. Uh, my wife has to wear Darth Vader. doesn't matter. So all of these people around there, for every 100 classic Star Wars shirts, there were maybe three Disney Star Wars shirts being worn. This is a huge problem. And Disney's going to have to address it. But the problem is they're not going to wake up for another 10 years. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching this. Um, if this is what was on your mind and what was on my mind, they're more of a like mind. And that should scare most people. So if you like these videos, then thumbs up, subscribe, hit the little bell. Um, I make a couple of videos a week uh, about anything that's on my mind. It might be a technology thing, a photography thing, Star Wars thing, Marvel thing, uh, something else. We just did a couple of days of Sammy Hagar shows and concerts and interviews and stuff. So that was a whole load of fun, a lot of tiring, a lot of driving and stuff, but that was pretty fun. So there's videos about that. Uh, you know, if you like any of that, you know, do all the YouTube stuff. All right. Thanks for watching this one. Take care. Oh, missed the button. Oh, no.